Welcome to the Short Rod Show. You're talking with Ben. And Brett. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We are on our last episode of the season. I Man, know. has the season flown oh, by. Oh my gosh, dude. It, it, it's been a special year. Uh, the fishing has been so-so, but this podcast thing and meeting a bunch of folks and chatting and messaging and it's oh, yeah. been it's been a special year mm-hmm. that's been really cool this year just for for us to see the growth of the of the uh, show and and just basically gives us more reasons to talk about ice fishing yeah so this our, year we've talked about it way more than we ever have and oh, we love it i know I, well, I never knew i thought about it so much until now yeah now all i think about is well what do we got to talk about this week what's our next step what's our next thing yep uh so yeah, so for a special end of the year uh, finale here, Ben, what are, you, what are we talking about this week? we got a week? couple cool topics to talk about today. Uh, of course, we want to recap the season, uh, let you know yep. kind of some tips and tactics that we've learned and things that we've picked up on this year, uh, how our season's gone, and and also, you know, looking towards next year, what we're, yep. what we're thinking about. Uh, but then also want to go through our podcast setup and yeah. actually explain a little bit about how we started the podcast, some of the equipment we use, um, you know, how accessible it may or may not be to people. Uh, if you're thinking about starting your own podcast. Yeah. We had some folks, especially when we first started reach out and say, Hey, you know, this is a great idea. I thought about doing it. Just kind of never pulled the trigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think if they're still listening, they're going to be kind of shocked at really how easy and accessible it really is. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, a lot of people, and uh, we, at first we thought of it too, just to do, getting into YouTube um, and what that all involves and entails and the commitment to, yep. to do that. And uh, really we just got turned on to podcasting and never looked back. So yeah. we'll talk about our setup and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy that portion too. And, and we'll talk a little bit about what we have in store for the, the show next, next season. Yeah. Awesome. Should be a good episode. That's coming up next on short ride show. Hey Ben. So I've got this buddy. That's trying to start a small business, but he's having a real tough time with his digital footprint and just trying to figure all that out. Do you know anybody that could help him out? Well, I think I do. I know uh, a couple cool guys at this company called Evergrow Marketing, and they really specialize in helping landscape and lawn care companies maximize their digital footprint and basically bring customers to them, help them get found on the internet. Really? I mean, they'll work with any business. Um, they're really looking to expand, and if you tell them that Ben and Brett sent you from the, the Short Rod Show, you can get 10% off your first order. Really cool. If you're interested in the Evergrow Marketing team and what they have to offer, check them out on evergrowmarketing.com and tell them Ben and Brett from the Short Rod Show sent you. You know, Brett, I was poking around on Facebook the other day, and I could just not find the Short Rod Show. What's the deal? Oh, you just got to punch us in on Google. What do you mean? We show up on Google already? Oh, yeah. The Evergrow team hooked us up. Holy cow. That's awesome. Yeah. Good deal. I'll try that now. Yeah. Right. You just punch in Short Rod Show and we'll come up on our website, shortrodshow.com. It'll come up on Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Awesome. So people can find us all over now. Yeah. All over the internet. That's great. We're also on Instagram too. I've been trying to keep up with that. Posting some cool pictures. When we're out on the ice, you can check us out there too. Yeah. Sweet updates. Awesome. Check us out, guys. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're talking about recapping our season here on yeah. the, the final season finale episode of the Short Rod Show for this ice fishing season. Yep. 2019, and, 2020. And I mean, when I say we're going to recap the season, we're talking both recap the Short Rod Show season and recap Ben and I's yes. uh, ice fishing season. Our fishing expeditions. Yeah, because I mean, thinking back about it, uh, I mean, it was mid-October. And we had snow on the ground. Oh, yeah. And we both were freaking raring to go. Ice fish is coming, chomping at the bit. Yep. As you usually do in Iowa, is you get ahead of yourself a little bit. Yeah, and then actually for me, I think it started in September, probably just getting the itch. Once our last trip, you know, open water fishing, Yep. kind of wrapped that up about September and, yep. and busted out all the ice gear, started prepping, had it set up in the garage, you know, that was a that was a good time getting you revved up for the season. Yep. And then like you said, that snow hit, the first cold snap, and it's like, all right, when's Here everything gonna freeze? Yeah, that was you like mid October. I wanna say and I, I think we've talked about this story a little bit before, but we first started talking about the podcasting idea sometime around October one. Yep. Is when we first was like, Hey, you know what? Maybe we should do this. This would be kind of a fun deal. Yep. Uh to do during the season. Um and we were just getting coming off of a big year when we were doing a couple tournaments and that mm-hmm. sort of deal and doing fairly well. I'm like, you know what, let's let's keep the momentum rolling and 
uh, let's get into this podcasting thing. I mean, we didn't really have any experience, but yep. I think uh, judging by you guys listening and uh, the feedback we've gotten, I think we've done pretty well so far. Yeah, absolutely. So rolling through uh, October in the with the podcast we were recording, yeah, the website all set up, yeah, <clears throat> kind yep. of get everything ready to go, and then I think November fifteenth we rolled out. Was that the date? Uh, yep, all of our episodes. Yeah, um, you know, wanted to front load everything and and get everyone ready for the season. Yeah, uh, of course. By then, guys were ice fishing up north uh, a little bit, and we were not. Well, you start seeing those Facebook posts and you start seeing the YouTube videos of hey, early ice, first ice, and it's like, yep, freaking November one, and you're just like, damn it, yep. Uh, down here, the water's December, still forty degrees down December here. December is our first ice. If, if you're lucky, yeah. If you're lucky, uh. So yeah, if I'm sure we've got a lot of new listeners now is so we 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 initially dropped those four first episodes. So the first four episodes that you see in this mm-hmm. podcast season, we dropped them all at once so that as people listened, they could be like, "Oh, boom." They could binge a little bit and kind of yep. really get to know us and hopefully get hooked on the short rod show. Yeah, I think it worked pretty well. Yeah. <clears throat> the feedback was really good on those episodes. Yep. Um, you know, of course we got a lot better as we went along. Oh, you, and you dude, can tell. it makes There's, me cringe. Yep, oh, it makes me cringe yep, those I can't first couple episodes. Oh, nope. God. No, I, I I tried. I went back to, I think, the second episode uh, when we did the throwback yep. episode, and I was like, oh, man. Ugh. Those commercials are t- yeah, <laughs> those we, commercials are bad. We started picking up on it pretty quick, so, <laughs> uh, which is good. Good for everybody involved. Yep. Um, but, yeah, we had some uh, pretty good outings. I mean, we went out after work, ice fishing. Uh, uh, we didn't really did do little, that much until January. Yeah, but I mean, going through the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Into January, yeah. definitely. We were. Yeah. We were I'm still hooked in good. December because we got a little early December. Maybe like a week we got out early, didn't we? Yep. Yep. On real thin ice. Oh yeah, we were on some some thin stuff. It was solid clear spud bar. What proved. was that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it was the week after uh, Thomas went to daycare for the first week, and then he got yep. sick, and then that's when. Becca was yelling at oh, me for yeah. leaving to go ice fishing. She had then, a sick then baby it all at went home. To hell. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But man, still, hats off to you for getting out on the ice. Jeez, I was like, man, Brett's season's gonna yeah. be a little rough. I mean that that situation probably wasn't great, but we've I've recovered. Nicely. But I mean, just in the whole season, you got out and about about as much as you wanted. Yeah. To, right? Well, I got lucky that Thomas has been a fairly healthy, uh, easygoing kid. Yep. He hasn't been real high maintenance, so. Yeah. yeah, we've gotten out, gotten able to do yep. stuff we need to do. That's the main thing. And Becca's a, you know, a jewel. Absolutely. Better put that in there. Support, <laughs> supporting us all the way. Yep. That's important. So, yeah, so into January, got some good trips in, like I said, after work. That's kind of our bread. That was kind of yeah. our bread and butter. Well, it warmed back up a little bit there early January. Yep. I mean, we didn't get back into ice, so we did. We had that little period there at the end of December, warmed back up. We lost a lot of our ice until, I would say, mid-January. Yep. We didn't really get to do any ice fishing hardly until, well, we had to travel north. That was when we traveled up to, uh, oh, what was that? that? That pond just south of Clear Lake. Um, and then we tried to go over to uh, your uh, your secret weapon. Didn't oh, turn yeah. out to be so secret or nor a weapon, but. Uh, it, it was. That was about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. how it that goes. Was the, that, although that was the tight lip bluegill episode. Uh-huh. Yeah. When we, then we stopped at uh, uh, that pond south of Clear Lake. Yep. Got on those gillies. Did a little catch and cook sort of deal on the ice that was a lot of fun we actually yeah. did pretty good that was a heck of a lot of at fun. that place considering uh some of the feedback i got on some of the other later trips to that lake was yeah. just nothing. dead dead sea yep. yeah i nothing. think we were lucky to even catch keeper keeper yep. fish at that point and we saw a crappie so it was good saw a crappie caught a crappie <laughs> can't beat that mm-hmm. and that was when it was raining i yep. mean it was yeah that was that was good yep. i always like getting out in those kind of different days where well, that's usually when the fish fishing exactly. gone. Yeah, when nobody else wants to be out there. Yep, yep. Plus, then you got a good story too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was a real shit day out there, yeah. but we we killed them. Heck yeah! yeah. I yeah. Almost got the truck stuck trying to get out. <laughs> well, that's that was when my wife that was and brushy. I went. Well, my wife and I went, and after that, oh yeah, that's right. That was the New Year's. That was uh, the New outing. Year's trip. Yeah, <laughs> took the wife and the dog, and uh, my wife's actually pregnant right now, so uh, that was kind of our last. First and last ice fishing outing of the of the season. Yep. Uh, but we made it out there, and the short rod show pickup two wheel drive was just not cutting it, dude. Speaking <laughs> of the pickup, man, the reaction we get on the highway is just hilarious. People just honking and waving at us and giving oh, us yeah. the fist as they're driving by. The best part is when so I mean we're pounding thirty five all the time. You know if we're heading up to 
Well, yep. we haven't even fished Clear Lake, but headed up north. Yeah, to a, heading a up couple to spots. other directions. Yep. So we're on thirty five a lot, and man, we just sit in the right lane, and people pulling otters and quads, and everybody just yeah. going up to Clear Lake, just honking at us and waving. Love a little it. Bit. Hopefully, awesome. these guys are listening. I bet they are. Heck yeah, yeah you know who you are. Yeah. You can see that thing a mile away now. <laughs> Hilarious. So that was really cool. Um, yeah, that was neat. Then, So what? yeah, then it warmed up. So where yeah. are we at? We're about mid Jan, mid I was thinking like later January. You're in, we're in the end of January. That's when we really got on. Yep. That's when it got cold. Yep. started getting cold consistently. We started to add nice. Uh, that's when really the whole state opened up. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think of what, what all we did. We, we stuck around Ankeny a lot. Yeah, well, you went south a little bit. And fish on your own a little bit too. Oh, back home. <clears throat> yeah. Well, back home and down to like Badger down in that area. Oh yeah, yeah. I did the Badger trip. Yeah, that was all right. Badger's kind of in a bottom, kind of a cycle that's not good. Yeah, at the, the low point. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of cycling back out of the big bluegills. Yeah. Yep. But so is that's that's just the way the, yep. those those hog daddies go around yep. here. Then into February, we we're still hitting it pretty good, which is good because yep. the season was pretty short after that. Yep, yep. So Kept first part of February. February. Uh, yeah, and that's when we rolled out the stickers also. Yep, stickers. Had the uh, trip on the Mississippi. That was super cool. We'll yeah. do something like that next year. Yeah, yeah. Man, that was just cool break. What was it? What was it Brandon referred to that? The the crappie? It wasn't the decoy crappie. It was something else. Uh, what was he, what do you call it? What? Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. On what the Mississippi it. trip? No, no, no. It was that. Uh, no, I don't think it was specifically on the Mississippi trip. I don't remember what he called it. <laughs> Said something that was hilarious. I think it was a text message. Oh, okay. Yep, we get a lot of those back and forth. <laughs> That's a good time. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, so that, that was cool, just seeing different water that we've never been on before, trying to break it down. Yeah, Lots so would you go back? Fishing. What do you think? What, what would be your plan going back to the Mississippi? I want to try some other types of water. Different pools, different backwater? Probably what do you think? different pools. I mean, it'd be nice to get on that southern pool. Ooh, Southern Pool. Well, oh, I 13, was going to say, let's go further north. 12 pools. to 13. I was yeah, we say go 10. 10 would be good. Yeah. Yep. I know nothing about 10, but. I don't either. I know heading up. But do you really way, know a lot about any of the other ones? No, either. not no. at all. <laughs> That's what's awesome about it. Yeah. And it's ever changing. Yep. That's yep. what keeps kind of people off of it, also, is it's always. Oh, absolutely. It's never like, oh, this is my go to spot and it's always the same and it's always good. It's like, oh, you know, I've got this spot. And yep. Then next year I got to find another spot. And then next year I got another spot. Then eventually you kind of have a milk run, but yep. uh, it takes a couple of years to really get that established in it. That's yeah. not good for traveling fishermen. Well, one thing I noticed too, like it was interesting. I don't know if I mentioned it on that episode, but you look at the, uh, so here in the Des Moines metro area, I mean, everyone's running similar setups. Mm-hmm. You know, you got your Eskimo guys, your otter guys, your clam guys. And they're all pretty well. Everything's new. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what? Like You don't every, got a whole lot of homemade stuff. Yeah. It's all new stuff. It's, and then uh, over you know. on the Mississippi, totally the opposite. I mean, yeah. guys are running 20 or 20 year, 30 year old otters that back when they were still green. Dirty. That's what or I'm talking the, about. Or the, uh, the camo, the ice camo versions, the, uh, yeah. you know, the purple and the orange otter styles. Well, the, what about the original Gents? I bet you got a couple of OG yep. uh, Dave Gents out there. There's a guy on a like early '90s two-stroke Polaris two-wheel drive with some chains on it. Oh, nice! Just, it sounded like a chainsaw. So running. it fits right in there with the Suzuki. I know we fit right in over yeah. on the Mississippi. Dang right! Um, so that was cool. Just to see the different styles of. So your of grandpa's fishing more there. fashionable out in that direction. Well, it's that's it's home turf was the Mississippi <laughs> River, so it makes sense. Um, it made a lot more sense after. Going on that trip was really understand yep. what you're, what he's talking yep, about. It was cool, yeah. But I mean, those guys they they're, they're dialed. Get, they're dialed in. They get a pretty short season too, kind of like what we get. But yep, um, they're not bouncing around to a bunch of different lakes. Everyone just goes to the river. They go to the river and they go to the same spot. Yep. Well, the cool thing about the river is it's never the same fish all mm-hmm. year long. I mean, those fish are cycling in and out all the time. Yep, it's a huge body of water. Uh, and I mean, they flood the fish that are in a certain area that you're fishing fluctuates with the water. Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely. if the water goes up, goes down, speeds up, slows down. Yep. Uh, that's a different body. That's, those are different fish in there all the time. Yep. So it's never, oh yeah, I'm here and there's just little dinkers. And then tomorrow there could be freaking yep. monsters in there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That was a really nice trip. So we'll do something like that again next year. Get you involved in it. Yeah. Hopefully I can make it next year. In. Yeah. I should be able to make that work. Um, and then, yeah, end of February, that was kind of our tournament time. Yep. 
Not too uh yeah, not Dakins. too many. <laughs> I think Dakins will be on the on the list of continuing to mm-hmm. go. That was just a lot of fun. I mean it's so relaxed. It's real it's literally just big fish. Uh top three biggest oh, fish. Yeah. That was a blast. Uh you're just hanging out, jonesing with people. Yep. Uh it's a good time. I'm excited. We'll take Thomas out there with us sometime. Yeah, and it's only ten bucks and, and you're guaranteed to go home with something and with chili. Yeah. I mean I tell you what <laughs> oh yeah, and you eat those eat the chili Can't and those that. dude, those snap on socks are freaking money oh yeah i got i like those socks a yep. lot yep. yeah the the thermos i got i threw that in the trash already yeah. well, the, that, the lid falls off if i that, tip it uh, over the lid falls off straight furrow hat i threw that away too i wasn't gonna move that <laughs> so that's funny that you say straight furrow I, I, I forgot you had that so yeah i worked with the straight furrow consulting now oh my god yeah <laughs> that's funny I, I i had that hat sitting on the kitchen table before we moved and i was like God, I'm not moving that. <laughs> yep. I got a million hats. You know? Yep. Dang it. Just Actually, like, yep. now now that I think about it, I should have <laughs> grabbed that from you. That would have been money for me to go meet with those guys and have their hat on already. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. <laughs> yeah. That would have been hilarious. Oh, shoot. That's great. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, that's kind of wrapping the season up with the old brushy tournament. Yeah, that was the last time we got out. I put yep. my stuff away the next day. Yep. And that just this time of year, I mean, you had some stuff going on. I, of course, was moving. Um, and then... You know, the, the ice was going downhill at that point. Yep. Yep. I mean, Where, it's gone now. That was only two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. There's no ice at all now. Yeah. And like Clear Lake, they're not, they're not, they're done on that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Boji's done. Yeah. Boji, the car uh, fell through today. The car fell through the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The raffle mm-hmm. car. That's kind of a cool deal that they do that. Yeah. Every explain, year. explain how that works if people don't uh, know. I don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, I just know that, I don't know, some sort of organization. I think it's the rotary. Uh, the rotary. Yep. Puts a old junky kind of a demo looking car out on the on the lake on a, by a real busy kind of an overpass yeah. area. They remove all the fluids. All yeah, the, you know, yeah. I think it's the same car every year, and they the, they winch it back out. Yeah, yeah. They don't just leave them. Yeah. They don't just yeah. let it stack up in there. But uh, <laughs> they, yeah, they go put it out there towards the end of the season, and then people join or enter a raffle, and they say, "Hey, I think it's I don't know how much money it is to enter, but yeah. put your money down and say, hey, I think it's going to fall through on this day. I think it's going to fall through on whatever days." Um, and then whatever days they do, they take those groups and yep. then they raffle it off and then you win, I don't know, whatever percentage of the Yeah, of probably the a good chunk of, chunk of change. It's a real popular by. thing in the community up there. So yeah, I think, I think like good. you think throughout the season and the variability that we're having in weather, like yeah. it's almost impossible. I mean, I th- I'm pretty day. sure that car fell through like, a, I mean, so it fell through today. I'm pretty sure it was like the end of or early mid April before it fell mm-hmm. through last year. Yep. So, I mean, there's a wide range of. Oh yeah, wide range of That's stuff to go cool. on there, and you know, depending on, and I'm sure you you can buy tickets all the way through. But yep. say you start in December, well, you don't know how cold it's going to be in January. No. You could have, you know, three feet of ice going. Well, yeah, there. don't buy tickets till the end, till <laughs> you have to. So that's a pretty cool deal. Uh, but yeah, the Brushy Creek tournament that was our last last time out, and I think that was a good, great. Time. That was a good hurrah on the last for the last expedition. Oh yeah, got on some walleyes. Yep, got on a couple little. Third perch. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a good time. I really enjoyed it. I, I I just love fishing that lake, man. Oh, yeah. There's just so much structure, so much to do out there. Yep. You really have to work for the fish. Yep. But the fish are where they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you fish so many of the lakes, in, at least in my mind anyways, you know. I try to fish the contours and fish these inside turns and the drops and the bottom of the drops or the top of the shelf. Mm-hmm. And there's fish there on brushy. Uh, now they're not always that accessible because a lot of times they're tied up in the trees and you yep. can't really get your jig in there very, very well, but, uh, they're where they're supposed to be. Like if I go to big Creek. Oh yeah. Don't even get me started. Those fish aren't where they're supposed to be because everybody knows where those, everybody identify, you can identify those spots. Yeah. Yep. Anybody that has a lake map can be like, yep. Uh, I've watched 10 YouTube videos and they should be on the humps and they should be on this drop and they should be on this turn. Those are the most obvious places. Yeah. So everybody just pounds those spots where then. That one gets so much pressure and yep. it's so much more easier to catch those. Well, it's opener. It's more open water that you can troll through and do all that sort of stuff. So it's yep. You don't have to work as hard to get your lure placed exactly where it needs to be to get that fish to bite. Uh, yep. So I'm excited to get the boat out too now. Coming up, yeah. Well, get after it. Get Brett's well, boat out. <laughs> well, I'm I, I'm not even thinking about that right now. The first thing I'm thinking about is cats. ice out cats, and they're already hitting them hardcore. Oh, yeah. Last this past week, people have been pounding them. Uh, the old Beaver Beaver Creek is. So we're gonna have to make it over to good. Johnson B and T. Get yep. some shad guts. Yep. Yeah. Go hit Beaver Creek. Uh, go hit Big Creek. Go hit. Actually, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So when are you get the boat back? Uh, I usually don't bring that back until about mid May. 
uh, just because I let my parents take it out and stuff. And, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I was going to say. Sometimes I do, but I don't usually bring it back that early. It fits it's my, cold. It fit my garage. I mean, it fits too. in my garage. Fine. But it's cold. It's cold. Jeez, there, man. man. Wear your ice gear. We'll get out there. Uh, I got to take the family. Start tossing baits. Yeah, that's true. That but is, in that is early season, there's enough shoreline opportunities. That's not a big deal. That, that's always a good time. Uh, Mid-May is when, at least around here, is when the offshore bite yep. is kind of your best option. Yep, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, what else about our season? The old, uh, the short rod show we watched take off pretty much. Yeah. Not quite right away. Yeah. I mean, we had a pretty good push it right away. It started out. And I remember thinking like, oh shit, you know, we hit 400 downloads. That's freaking mm-hmm. huge. Oh yeah. And it was like 400 other people other than my mom, your mom and my, my, my brother, my yep. dad. But thanks for being a loyal listener, mother. I appreciate it. Oh yeah. My parents are all about it. Jake, shout out to you. Hmm. You're driving our download count. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I remember it being a big deal then. And then I was like, all right, well, the next thing is a thousand. Mm-hmm. It took us, I don't know, maybe three weeks. To, the first three weeks to hit a thousand. Yep, and that's starting from nothing. I and mean, that was no, starting at zero. The short ride show sounds well, we like had, a hilarious thing. We had like a, a hundred downloads before we even released it. Bef- well, I mean, we we released it on yeah. our Podbean, but we didn't like advertise it. We didn't have a Facebook yep. account. We didn't have anything. We just put it on there just to see how the make sure we knew how things worked. Yes, and that sounded good and that sort of deal. And we yeah, and we only had, like, sent it to a couple right people just to test it. Like, yeah. hey, how's this sound? Is this working? So some for other people you? were finding it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we met Cody at the uh, Yep Hyvee in Marshalltown, to, and he's the one who really got Man, us that rolling. Was, that was a good time. Yeah, yep. And yeah, he really pushed. Yeah, it. we'll have to do our Evergrow yearly Evergrow. Uh, yep. Meeting at that barbecue joint, we Marshalltown. <laughs> <laughs> the barbecue joint. What was that place called? I don't know. I don't oh remember. yeah, that was really good. Yeah, that place. Yeah, was that's on Main Street where the tornado went through. Yep. Yeah, heck yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was pretty good. To kind of, you know, had a meeting to to have the vision of the Short Rod Show. I don't even think we had a name. No, we didn't have a name yet at that point. We were still texting each other back and forth like, Short, what what, what should we call it, the the Ice Fishing Show or whatever this or that? And and then I remember the one night you sent me, you sent me like two options, and one was the Short Rod Show, and I was like, done. The second I saw it, I was like, yep, that's the answer. And you're just like, well, I don't know. I don't no, know. My if we wife, I do told that. my I told my wife that and I was like, I think we're gonna call it the short rod show. Yeah. And I think it's got a really cool ring to it, you yeah. know? Short rod show. Yeah. And she's like, it's God, you can't name it that. Short <laughs> rod show. Like no one knows what that means. It's like the only people matter. that know what it means are ice, are fishermen. ice fishermen. They yeah. know what it means. Yeah. That's all yeah. that matters. So that was super cool. Yeah, that was awesome. But yeah, so that's a good transition into talking about starting the podcast but well before we start that i'm gonna get another beer all right you can keep talking i'm gonna keep talking then <laughs> so you know brett and i yeah sure brett and i are are good good buddies we've been fishing together for a long time and we always talk about ice fishing um, that's kind of our jam out of our friend group you know we're the ones that are driving the ice fishing trips driving the uh the discussions about ice fishing and so it just seemed natural to want to pursue that this year and we were in the spot where we said hey we got basically nothing better to do this winter other than fish and talk about ice fishing and so that's something that that's all we did that's that's what we wanted to get started so um just the drive to start something we figured there's no better time than now right yeah um and this season was as good of good as any season to to start it so that's where everything kicked off and we had a well, one of my friends, Cody, um, part of Evergrow Marketing. I think that was really the clutch part. That reached, you know, I reached out to him. I was like, hey, we're trying to start something here. How do we get... How do we do any of it? How do we... Yeah, we had no clue. Yeah. You know, the podcasting thing, um, I spent a lot of time on YouTube. Just yep. We were watching videos, trying to figure out how do you start a podcast? What's the steps? You know, yep. the the specific details of things you need to focus on in order to be somewhat successful. You know, we didn't really care about our success. If we didn't have Cody, all we'd have is a Facebook page and our Podbean. That's probably all we'd have. And well, I mean, eventually, probably by now, we would have expanded into those other podcasting forms. But that's all. That's all the short rod show would be. Yeah, and And I mean, by and large, that's our most. 
that was huge uh, and activity, so, but so Cody, thank you for all all of your help oh on my this gosh, yeah. at Evergrow. If you guys are in any need of any kind of digital marketing solutions, anything, anything, reach mm-hmm. out to Evergrow. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, like like I said, we met Cody in a Hy-Vee par- uh, Hy-Vee yep. and we used their Wi-Fi, and he yep used and his computer and just having someone to guide you through. Hey. You can do it this way if you want, but I'd recommend you do it this way yep. because yep. Use this use this you make company this decision uh, yep. to set your website up. Use this company. What all what did all they set us up with? So he set us up with the website domain. Yep. We bought the website. Uh, yep. the Shortrodshow dot com. Yep. Just shortrodshow dot com. Not he said don't do www. Nope. Just which is good. Show dot com. Yep. So it's just shortrodshow. Um, we got Google. Uh, docs rolling. The Google Suite. The so, Google Suite rolling. Yep. Google Suite is how we do all of our emails. So that's how you can get a hold of us at yep. contact at shortrodshow.com, Ben at shortrodshow.com, and Brett at shortrodshow.com. Yep. Um, so that was really cool. Instead of being shortrodshow at gmail.com. Yep. That's probably already taken. Yep. Who knows? Well, it helps to keep a backup of all these uh, yep. on our Google Drive and all that. And- yeah. Well, so we actually... I back up the uh, podcast to Google Drive through the Short Rod Show login that we have. Yep. So that's I don't know fifty gigabytes or whatever. Yeah, I mean these these can't take up that much air. I'm they sure. take about thirty megabytes. Oh yeah, <laughs> that'll last us for a lifetime. Um. So anyway, uh, we got he got us set up. We use MDD hosting to do our that was our the actual that was hosting. the deal I was looking for. So you have to buy a website yep. name, buy the domain, have somebody host it. And then, um, as far as the podcasting side goes, that's a whole nother yeah. discussion. So. so then that went from, so, so that's our website setup stuff. So now, yeah, go into the podcasting part. Mm-hmm. So we had to buy, we have, we pay Podbean. Yep. And that's our hosting platform. So Podbean holds the files Yep. that are, you know, the actual audio files of our podcast. Yep. And they support a URL that is, you know, available to what who you know whatever podcast platform you guys yep. listen on. And so or anything. I think will, if, if yeah. even if you're yep. listening and you run a website or something, you can copy that URL and yep, post embed it to your it. own website or you can embed it to your own Facebook thing or mm-hmm. whatever you want. So every time say you use uh the Google Play Store, yep. right? Play Music or whatever it's called on an Android device yep. to find our podcast. When you click on our podcast and you search through there, it'll actually go right it's to that URL pulling and pull from that. Podbean. Yep, yep. And, and then that's that how we know how many downloads we get. So there's a couple options on that. You can host your podcast yourself um, on your own website. Yeah, but then you have to pay for that extra storage. Yep. Right? So that's that's something that we looked at. Um, really, the <laughs> it sounds strange to think about, but um, we were concerned about just bandwidth. Okay. Yep. So. Say you are paying X number of dollars a month for your hosting and all of a sudden the short rod show, your podcast, whatever takes off and you get a hundred thousand people that want to try and access it within a couple of days. Yep. That could crash your, your server. Yep. If you're not, you know, on top of that, they'll shut you no down idea. because you're not paying for that size of bandwidth. Yep. So they'll just shut you down. Yep. So then everyone's pissed off at you. You can't get to your yeah, podcast. Well then, yeah, you, you, I mean, all of a sudden you hit it and then yep. your server just shits on you yep so pod podbean is who actually hosts our podcast yep um and that's the tools we use to release it and all of that but uh basically it's unlimited bandwidth we pay for their premium you yep. know podcast uh platform uh which basically also allows us to publish episodes on a scheduled basis that was a big thing yeah so, once you discovered that yep. how long was what, what i think was um, that into december before Into you December, discovered that yeah, part? We, uh, we weren't sure. Or we hadn't paid for it yet, so you didn't have that accessibility yeah, yet. Yeah, so it's actually free on Podbean for Seven the first. Seven it's, it's like by the me, by was the, by the time. Megabyte or Five hours? Or, yeah, five hours. first five hours, actually, yeah. So five hours of podcasting is free. Yep. Well, we did that for the first month, um, and then once we were going to push over that, I think it's $110 a year if you buy it as a yearly yeah. package. Uh, but that's unlimited Everything. Unlimited everything. Yep. Unlimited episodes, unlimited hours of content, unlimited downloads. You know, we could have, we could blow up and be on the news tomorrow and it's fine. Yep. You know, I know Podbean can, can handle that. Yep. They'll be fine with it. So that's, that's a really good deal. So I'd encourage you guys to do that. If you're looking at starting up 
a website, it makes it super easy. Yeah. Or podcast. A, a uh, podcast. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. If you um, want to do that. The, the scheduled thing. So how we normally do it, we record during the week. Today's a Thursday. Yeah. We're going to record today. Um, you know, I might get to ed- edit everything tonight, yep. tomorrow, Saturday night, whatever. Um, if I get it done on tonight and edit everything, I can throw it up on, on Podbean and say, publish Sunday morning at yep. 830. And well, I don't have to be at my computer at 830 hitting publish. And that the editing part was a big deal of why we preferred the podcast part over a YouTube mm-hmm. something or other. Because, I mean... Those dudes on YouTube spend a hell of a lot of time editing videos. Yeah, and talking with... If they have good videos, they spend a yep. hell of a lot... We're here. How how much time do you spend... How much time will you spend now? First, Well, I mean, maybe not when we first started. When I first now. started, it was about an hour. Now yeah. I'm down to about 15 minutes. Yeah, and that's mostly just clipping in our yep. beginning music, uh, Evergrow uh, yep. commercial, and our ending music. Yep, and it helps that... Maybe we blurping just, out we a just few record, of my cuss words. Exactly. <laughs> I just leave it explicit. People can judge for themselves yep. when they click yep. on it. <laughs> um but yeah, I just I just spend about 15 minutes doing it every week. It's not a not a huge time commitment. Yep. Sit on the couch, plug my headphones in. I have a super old laptop. Like it's not yeah. it's nothing fancy at all. Yeah. Uh, it to works be out to great. It. Well, it's it uh it's a heavy duty one or whatever they're called. A tough book. Tough book. Yep, yep. Yeah. Use that. Windows what? 7 on that sucker? Windows 7 still. <laughs> We're just going to ride her till she dies. Nice. Um so editing uh, I actually talked with my brother who's uh, in the music field and his uh, his recommendation was something called WavePad and yeah. that's a oh, good yeah, sound yeah, yeah, editor. Yeah. That's right. Uh, that's what I use to actually look at the waveforms of our uh, podcast and edit everything together. Yep. It's really visual. It's really easy. It does all what of our... What did you use at first? Uh, what was that free? It was there's free, something it? free that came with our uh, our equipment, I think we used. Oh, it came with the Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so WavePad, I think it's thirty bucks to buy just outright. Oh, you we just have it outright. We just have it outright. Oh, sweet. Um, it's kind of an open source deal, so it's more, you know, user supported rather than a, a company that yep makes it. But um, it works out really well. Really easy to use. It does all of our. We do our amplification on there is a big big portion of it. Even this out, especially when we're the normal. Well, we do a compression that kind of normalizes everything. Brings the lows up and the highs back down. Yep. Um, keeps it a little more even, so you're not constantly tweaking your, your volume. Well, a little bit car. of that. I mean, you know, I'd imagine it's a bigger deal when we're on the road. Yep. When yep. we're not in the studio mm-hmm. uh, talking in the mics. Like, today we're talking in mics, and I'm sure, yep. you know, when we say we're out fishing, those episodes. Oh, it's a little different. Yep. They take a little bit more compression, a little yep. bit more work. Uh, and then uh, the amplification, though, is, is big, too, where you want to make sure, you know, I set all of our episodes at a certain volume. Yep. So. That way you don't have one real loud person, one real quiet person, or yep. something like that. Yep, and yeah. each episode is always the same. So, yep. Yep. Um, And then, so speaking of equipment, talk talk about that a little bit. So our our actual equipment setup. Yep. You guys might think we're in some crazy looking, you know, the bat cave kind of deal in no. Ben's basement. Well, we are. We are. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what we're doing. I mean. If that's exactly what we are. <laughs> so what, we, what we've got. For microphones, anyways, we'll start with the microphones just because I have the name right in front of me here. Is the Zingall? Is that what that's called? Zing Zingu. The Zingu microphone. It's the Amazon special yep. for thirty four ninety nine or something like yep. that. It's a it's a microphone it come, kit. Yeah, it came with the whole kit. Comes with the microphone. Comes with the the little fuzzy on top. Comes with the the uh, uh, pop filter, which is kind of junk, but. Yep. It does help, I think, a little bit, but I think not these a whole do lot. just as fine. Yeah, I think with the well. with the fuzzy thing on, I think yep. it, it helps a lot. Uh, it comes with your stabilizer bands, your mic holder, your arm that we just clamp to an end table. Yep. Um, comes with your cords that we run to everything. Oh it no, we had to get different with cords. Well, it comes. It comes oh. with cords. Yeah, it's it just, comes with it, the it comes with cords ones. that plugs into your computer, not into mm-hmm. our recorder. True. Which. What we're doing is a full analog microphone setup. Yeah, everything I read about before we started this was you can do it from your computer. And so I'm also, I had a few cameos on the Guns and Roses, or Guns and Rose Guns podcast. And Rose podcast. Guns and Rose yep. podcast, so we talk about agronomy things. I do a few, I've done a cameo on there. Uh, we do that straight through uh, uh, Zoom, like the meeting, Zoom meeting stuff. Yep. And the audio's not, 
as happy as I'm with it. Uh, I don't think your computer does all that good of a job. Yeah. Um, I think going straight analog rather than trying to digital is probably the word I'm looking for yep. for the going through your computer. Yep. Uh, well, you can use a digital mic yep. that translates your voice right into digital. Yep. Or you can do how we do it where we have analog mics yep. that they're running 48 volt mic power to them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to have something that supports what's called phantom power um, to power your mic. So Ooh, that's actually, a nice word. Phantom power. Or, uh, or not word, but uh, yep. just a phrase. That's a cool, cool term. So or a term, that was a word. If you have a analog mic that's powered, um, it's generally going to be a better sound quality Cause we, for the price. Because we have the option of what, 12 and 48? I think 24 and 48. 24 and 48, that's right. And we just went full 48. Just go full, full tilt. We got plenty of power. Yep. So um, with that, you need something that drives that. But for the money... You can buy a $34 mic like what we're running. So yep. we have $70 in mic equipment. And I'd say the mic is a big deal. Pretty good. Because that was our main concern when we first started was we've heard some podcasts that'll that go are obviously over the computer and they are, sound like dick. Yep. It's yes. horrible. And that's one thing where if you're in your car, you're listening through headphones, whatever. If you're through headphones, it's not as big a deal. But I feel like in your car, it's horrible. Yep. Yep. So... Uh, we want good sound quality, which we got with our analog setups Yeah, for a really cheap price and just running analog to digital. Yeah. Well, even still, since we're on the microphone part, I mean, I did, I did a little bit more research on the microphone part. And the only reason you really would need an expensive microphone is if you're like singing into it. If you're really pushing those high and low octaves. Sure. And that like really pushing some sound into it and you need a crisp sound. If you're just talking to the microphone like yeah. we are, uh, you just need a microphone. Yep. You need an actual microphone. Don't your computer microphone is not great. Your phone microphone is better. Yep. So if you have to do that, if you don't want to invest in the money in the microphone, mm -hmm. use your phone rather than your computer. And then yeah, run it into the belly of the beast, the Zoom yes. H4N. The the star of the show. Yeah. So if you guys are looking for something similar to what we have or exactly what we have that yep. works awesome, can't recommend enough it's a zoom h4n pro oh that thing is money and it's actually used by a lot of podcast folks a lot of videographers use it they attach it to your camera um you know use it to sync all your audio up yep um, basically what it is is a a way to power analog mics and record and convert that into a good digital signal it's got yep. a really good digital processor that will make the sound quality pop yep and yep. make it sound really And I mean, nice. this thing will, it'll take video, I mean, whatever you have to plug into this thing, it will plug into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can take, I don't, I don't know the exact terms for the plugins, um, but we had the, the long ones. What were those? Uh, so those are like a three ace mic cable. Yeah, mic cable. They'll plug into that also. Yep. And then we're running the XLR cables. XLR cables. It. But then you can also talk because it has its own microphones. You can. Pump the own yep. microphone into it, and that's what we use when we're out on the road. We're and then we've the got, portable. and then we've got the the cell phone plug in also that we can plug into that thing. Yeah. So the uh, what's that called? I don't know. It's like a cell phone kit that you can buy for it, and basically what it does converts a mic, or it's actually a, a you know an audio jack output. Yep. To go directly into the Zoom, you don't yep. want to just hold your phone up to a mic. No, with no, someone no, no. That's gonna sound terrible. Um. So. You can plug everything right in, and it's got enough out or enough inputs to it yeah. to do two analog mic inputs and then a cell phone input. Yeah, so we can have a guest on the show. I mean, which it's impressive. Really well. It's impressive how what that thing can handle. Yep, um, and it'll record right to an SD card. Yep. So, so we, I have seen some folks they kind of complain about. It. I'd imagine they're doing a lot more, a lot more this type of stuff than we are, where it's not that big of a deal to pop an SD card out, plug it into your computer, like well. Some folks say, well, that's just an extra step. I mean, they do make more sure. expensive units where you don't have to have the SD card. It just, you can edit it from the unit or you can USB send it. USB or it, Yeah, whatever. Yep. But the SD card for us isn't a big deal. So, um, and I, actually, I mean, I prefer it because it's mm -hmm. kind of the generation of technology that I know well. <laughs> <laughs> We're a little bit old school yet. We're learning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so for power, the only thing we recommend would be to buy the extra cable or get the starter Well, we've been through our loops with the power. Yeah, we we ran the uh, the Harbor Freight two dollar batteries, <laughs> the Thunderbolt <laughs> batteries. Gosh, that was great. We, that episode that we had that we ran those, we had to change it out three times. We had to we change went, out batteries. Yep, it uses what two double A's? Four. four. 
I think it's four. Well, maybe it's two. Uh, I can't fit four. It's not that one. I think yeah, it's two. It's got to be two, yeah. So two or three. So uh, what, however many batteries, it only literally lasted to record with two mics. Five, powering. ten minutes. Five, yeah, five minutes. Yeah, and we had to change it back out. That was, that so was the funny. standard batteries will last a full episode, yeah. which is only... A, a good like, Duracell battery will last thir- you But time. still, it's only 30 minutes. Yep. So what we have now, explain what we got, Brett. Uh, so, so it does come with a plug-in. I mean, you could plug it in and plug it from yep, your wall. AC power. But what we run now is Ben's a, a Milwaukee man, so he's got the heated... Well, both Milwaukee and DeWalt. Well, yeah, but this is a 12 Milwaukee volt. 12 volt. Uh, hand tool or a power tool battery, cordless battery. Uh, and then he's got, I don't know what that adapter is exactly. It's for the heated jacket. Oh, for the heated jacket. It's got a USB plug plug in in there. So we got the USB powering off the Milwaukee or the Milwaukee. Yep. (laughs) Milwalt. Pretty Uh, close. Off the Milwaukee and it powers the zoom. And I think, I don't know how many. You don't charge that on a regular basis, do you? No. How many like, times have you charged that this season? It'll it'll last an entire season. Have you have you had to charge? You've charged it once. At charge least, it probably. once. You've just, charged just it once this sure. entire season. Yeah. Before we went out on the ice and we're away yeah. from everything else. So but. all this time, probably mid December is when yep. we started using it. Till now, it's been on that one battery, not charged, mm-hmm. and it's ran off of that. Uh, so that's pretty impressive, both for for Milwaukee and. The amount of power that the yep. Zoom uses, and then uh, we also learned some tips and tricks. The first couple times that we recorded, we we weren't using headphones or anything. Yeah, the headphones you know, are a big deal. We kind of learned our lesson a little bit and got dialed in. So if if you're not used to recording, um, it's a little weird. Which we weren't. No, nope, we were like, ah, why would we listen to ourselves it's, while we record? It's weird. You don't know how close you need to be to the mic. Yes. Brett's all over the place. Talking yep. with his hands. If I don't have my headphones on, turning away I'm, like this. I'm all over the I'm all over the freaking <laughs> place. But with the headphones, then you can hear your voice yes. consistently and you know when you start fading off yep. and when you, you when you're close or when your lips are smacking. It makes a big or, difference. And like especially like when that. we're out on the ice, if one of us forgets our headphones, we kinda have to have some hand signals to to rein everyone back in. Yeah. Like, hey, get Jack closer it up, to the mic. Get closer. Yep. Um you know, talk into into the mic, especially when we're recording just with the mics built in. With the built in zoom, yeah. Yep. Because that's what we do on the ice. Uh so I mean I still can't say enough about that zoom. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean it was two hundred bucks on Amazon, uh shipped to your door. Yep. And that thing is just out of the I mean out of the box it was ready to roll. Oh uh, yeah. we did a little tweaking with it, but uh we'll get into that here in a minute. But uh yeah, when we're on the ice recording, um I have a little tiny tripod, five inches tall, just so the zoom's not sitting flat. Uh, yep. it's not sitting it, on the ice and it kind of just so it, <laughs> it kind of directs the mics towards us. But I mean, we have, uh, so we're sitting in the otter. We've got Ben sportsman's caddy in the middle mm-hmm. and it's just sitting in the middle. So we're, I don't know, foot and a half, two foot away Yep, and just chatting. Um, and it, I can't believe how good it sounds. Yep. It's awesome. Um, you know, it's got some really good direction. Or even mics. we had Andrew in there with us. Yeah, I mean, he uh, was I speaking was, from the side. You were speaking, he was speaking right from the it. side. I was speaking straight into it. I was across so I was sitting where the door is, uh, across the ice. I was on a bucket, and then those two guys, uh, Ben and Andrew, were sitting in the seats, and I thought it sounded fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah, yep, it's good stuff. So yeah, if you guys are looking to start a podcast setup, I mean, we have in in our actual equipment alone is what three hundred bucks. Yeah, Tops. the actual hard parts, cables. Yep, both mics, the Zoom. Yep, yep. Or when we uh, traveled up to St. Paul. I thought that. I mean, yeah, there was some road noise, but I thought it turned that turned out yeah, really get good. Get the little radar detector noise in the background. Yeah, sound wise, I thought that turned out really good. Also, although that's probably one of our least listened to episodes. <laughs> I know it, it, it's funny to to see what uh, what we get really excited about, yeah, and we think it's going to be really good, yep, and then it's just kind of the opposite, yeah, which yep, is fine because yep, yep. like you never know. That reminds me that we need to see about getting media passes to the show next year. Yeah, we'll be the big time <laughs> next year, I'm sure. So, yeah, speaking of next year. We uh, got some... Actually, get into the settings a little bit on the Zoom quick before we jump into that. Just oh, you're I talking like earlier. levels and uh, Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, anything that you think is important on the settings as far as uh, did we do any tweaking uh, before? Oh, you're the so, one always staring yeah. at it. I don't know. No, we're really, really uh, so that that's the cool part about the Zoom. It's pretty much it's like ready set, to go out of the up. box. Um, we do run in, that's the other thing that's a little goofy. We run in stereo. Oh yeah, that's right. 
So like when you're talking because you're our hearing, first commercials were not in stereo. Yeah, you're hearing for, it just in your right ear, right? Yep. So Brett's in my right ear, and I'm in my left ear. Yep. Uh, when we talk, so we're in on two different channels. So um, if we were to, okay, I don't know, Brett messes up somehow. I yep. could, I'm sure I could delete out a certain part of your a chunk of just what I said. We don't have to junk delete <clears throat> both of us. Yep. Because we are we're on separate files at the moment. Yep. But the Zoom will do four channels. Yep. Um, if need be, we just run on two and I can, uh, normally the first thing that I do, if I know we had a clean recording, we're good. Like yep. this one's, I'm sure going to be, um, then I'll just convert it right into mono, uh, which podcasts, that's all they are anyway. It's, there's nothing special yep. about the actual format of podcasts. Um, we record it like 44 kilohertz or whatever, yep. like everything else and 128 megabytes. I mean, I'm second. sure there's only a select few people that are listening that will know what that, exactly. any of that means. Just go yeah. on YouTube and look how to start a podcast, how to edit it, whatever. Yep. Um, and then there's some steps there for doing that. But our, our actual setup on the Zoom, we record at like a 40 out of 100 mm-hmm. for these specific mics where we're at. Uh, we hit the top end a little bit when Brett gets excited. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you get pumped up. Talking about jigs. Yeah. Um, but the double jig rig. The double jig rig. <laughs> But otherwise, yeah, we're our our levels are really good, and the zoom just makes it it's piece of cake. Yep. So yeah, that's what's that thing really between yep. Cody and the zoom. I mean, that powers that's ninety percent of the power. The short we're just two dudes. Yep. Two dudes talking. <laughs> Anybody discussion. could sit in these chairs. <laughs> I know they could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good deal. Cool. Well, coming up for next year, then we got some got some cool things planned. I uh, want you guys to stay tuned definitely over the summer. Yeah. We're not going to be complete strangers to you, but. No, I think I, we'll definitely do some update sort of stuff over the summer. Um, I don't know that there'll be a schedule or exactly what that'll be, but yep. um, we'll definitely do some of that stuff. And then next year, I hope I hope to start again in November is the plan. Yep, absolutely. Um, and continue the weekly basis, and we'll see we'll see what goes on after that. Yeah, I think the uh, the Sunday kind of time frame has worked out pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I think that's been our best time. You know, we usually get a lot of listeners right away on Sunday, and then Monday Monday's is like big. Monday, Tuesdays day. are the big days. Yep, yep, yep. Um, you know, and that's just a credit to all of our subscribers. You can tell the ones that are getting the up the yeah episodes just automatically. Uploaded. That's another thing that blew me away is how many people we have follow us on Podbean. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. Even yeah, know I never people, even heard of Podbean before. Yeah, this. I didn't even know people use Podbean. Well, although. There's a good, I mean, there was a while I was checking some of them out and I mean, they only follow us. They made that to follow us. Yeah. And that's, that's the common away. question I get from people is, Hey, how come you're on Podbean? And yeah. that's it. I was like, that's no. Well, we don't know how to share. How do I share it from other things? Like, so when we share it from our Facebook, you, you share the, the link is always from Podbean. Podbean you share, automatically does that when it, you can't share it, it from out. like Apple. You could, it, it's not going to be automatic though. So yeah, every Sunday, Brett, you or go something ahead and like do that. that. I need to figure out how to do that. <laughs> but I get that a lot where people think we're just on Podbean. Yep. How do I get this podcast? Well, if you have yep. an iPhone, any kind of Apple product, you just go to podcasts and search Short Rod Show. Yeah, come right yeah. up. Well, I mean, obviously, these people know Google Play, Stitcher, um, Sound. Not, there's, there's not SoundCloud. There's podcast websites I've never even heard of that we're on now because yeah, they pick um, us up. My brother listens to it on Castbox. Yeah, I've never heard of that. that. Never heard of that. Yeah. And we've never put anything out on any of those. They yeah. just pick it up from seeing a URL that's a podcast and, and add it to their catalog. Some momentum. Yep. Because uh, yeah, now you Google the Short Rod Show or you Google Ice Fishing Podcast, and it just has us. It's just this is the answer that you're looking for. Yep. Yeah, and that's a credit. Cool. That's a credit to you guys going on and reviewing our podcast. Yeah, that's a huge deal. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, we have we have a ton of reviews on on Apple, dude. Yeah, that's big which time is on huge. Apple. Yeah, um, just getting a five star rating. People recommend it. Yep. Yeah, you know, we're tagged as I, a good ice fishing podcast. Yep. Um, so that's awesome. We, we must have just that. had a bad week that one week that we had two people give us a four two people to were three. just kind of they weren't really like they weren't mad Maybe they didn't at us comment or anything, or anything no. but. But we got one rating. It was it was within a week four. of each other. Like yeah, within a week we had those two ratings, and then we've never had a rating below a five since then. And it just it cracks me up. I'm like we must have just had a real shit see. episode. Or <laughs> said something exactly. that really got somebody fired up at that point. It's like yeah, these guys are crap. I don't want to listen to that. And then they actually leave feedback, which is or it's probably is John. Good. It was probably John. Ooh, we're up Stover. to forty nine ratings. Ooh, nice. So we have forty seven five stars. Yeah. 
one four star and one three star. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and those four and threes came within the same week of each other. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. Yep. Good stuff. What else you got, Brett? What are you thinking? I don't have a whole lot. It's been, I mean, been a hell of a ride this I'm, season. I'm two Miller Lights deep, so I'm starting to forget what I was going to talk about. There you go. We were uh, <laughs> we were thinking when we started this podcast, it'd be really cool to get. Like you said, once we hit 400, we were like, "Yep, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah." That's yeah, yeah. definitely you know probably a hundred people that we know and three hundred that we don't know. Yeah. And now we're up up over sixteen thousand downloads. Yeah, that's crazy. In one season, starting in November. So. Yep. Yeah. Really cool, and that's. Thanks to all you guys that are listening. Um, you know, don't forget about us over the summer. We'll be back next season for sure. A season hopefully be a little bit longer this year, next year. But yeah, that kind of sucked. I yep. wish it was a little bit longer, but that 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 is what Can't it is. I guess. That. Yeah, it is what it is. So, anything else, Ben? I don't really want to end. <laughs> I know. <laughs> It'll be nice to have uh, a little bit more time during the week, but we'll definitely be yeah, thinking next about year. Uh, oh, yeah. If you were wanting to talk about plans for next year, talk about the plan for the new studio next year. Mm-hmm. We'll be maybe graduate from the basement. We might be upstairs next year for sure. Yeah. Have a little short huge. rod show office yeah. slash studio. We'll get some of that insulation on the walls. Yeah, <laughs> That'll yeah, be funny. Yeah. It'll be like shipping, shipping crate foam, <laughs> <laughs> duct tape to the walls. Try to make it a legit studio. Yep. yep. Yeah. Just to have something where we can stay set up permanently would be cool. So yep. We'll get that set up. Yep. Yep. Heck yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that, – that's the beauty – that's the thing about ice fishing is you really don't – especially down here is you don't know what the season's going to bring next year. I mean, mm-hmm. you can be as excited as you want to be, but shoot, it might end up being like this year where you really don't have good ice until mid-January. Yep. And then at that point, we're talking, you know, 300 days from now. Um, yep. I mean, you hope and cross your fingers for early, but uh, maybe uh, – Maybe next year we can maybe do a little uh, early ice trip. Yep. Uh, go out and visit some folks that uh, I think that have be really cool. been chiming in yep. on uh, messages. You can definitely tell our, our top fans. Yep. You know, we appreciate you guys yeah. be- beating our drum for us, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out to you guys. So it's really been cool. If I want to say one thing that's really surprised the most out of me is when we first started doing this, I was like, you know what? I want to, and I, I, I'm sure I said this and talked about it in our first episode. Is I want this to be something that's going to service Central Iowa, mm-hmm. south of the ice belt type ice fishing, and to be honest with you, the majority of our ice fishermen are in the Northeast, which we're talking Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, New Hampshire, Northern New Pennsylvania, York. New York area. We have a pile of people up there in yeah. that area, and it's freaking awesome. I love that. That's cool. Yep. Um, and then a bunch of Canadians. Canadians, Which obviously yep. the Canadians listen to hell of it, but I couldn't, I mean, all I can think of, if you're in Canada, you're just like, why are you talking about fishing? Just go out there and catch them. <laughs> That's all you do in Canada. You just go catch them. We don't have time to they sit around and talk They don't call it fishing it. in Canada. They yep. call it catching. Yep. yep. Uh, of course, have you been to Canada? No, I haven't. Yeah, I just need, assume that's we what need, it's we like. We need to change that next yeah, year. Yeah, I just assume that's what it's like. Yeah, I turned a we'll guy. Take, uh, you think the short rod show truck will make it up there? Uh, I mean, we might have to graduate to my truck, maybe. We might have to bring, like, two gallons of oil with us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do work with a guy now that uh, he's from, well, he lives around the Ottawa, mm-hmm. Ontario area. Uh, turned him on to the podcast. So, Paul, if you're listening. Cool. Thanks appreciate you, Paul. Uh, yeah, I hope to do that. One, one The dream trip. So, if we're ta- ever talking dream trip, let's talk dream trip right All now. Right. I'd love to go to Nipagon. Nipagon would be Nipagon sweet. Nipagon would be dirty. <laughs> Nipagon and Reindeer Lake. I still want to get up there. Reindeer's too big for ice fishing, bro. No, I'm not ice fishing. Oh. I'm just talking. Yeah. You, you just said dream trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open water would be reindeer. I mean, that's just, you're going to have to have somebody take us out on that sucker. Yeah. Well, probably Nipagon also. Well, I just want to find someone that's got a float plane that will just fly down, pick us up at the Ankeny Airport. Yeah, that'd be sweet. wheels on there. We load everything up and we just go all yeah. the way up. Yeah, yeah. Bypass legit. the whole drive. Well, they could if twenty five hours. They could just there. pick us on Sailorville if they had to. Then we don't have to Landing pay for Sailorville. A, they don't yeah. have to pay for uh, landing at Des Moines Airport. There we go. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, now we're rambling. Uh, speaking of dream ice fishing trip, did you watch the uncut angling Mission Impossible char? Yeah, that trip? was good. I, li- I was did good. enjoy the hell out of it because then he's back to he actually Aaron actually is back to yeah fishing those wild off the beaten paths. Yes. 
crazy putting things. a lot of effort in to in for one fish catching hardly anything which yeah. is awesome ton of effort into one because that makes me feel like that's what i do yep <laughs> well i mean spent he spent all that time getting up on the lake mm-hmm Set up everything. I mean, it sounded like it took them like four hours just to go from their hotel to get to the lake that they wanted yeah, to Yeah, they stopped at Tim Hortons for how long? Well, yeah, but, but whatever. I bet I mean. But he had his, his wife with him, Michelle, yeah. and that meme that's going around that Michelle killed uncut angling. That started yeah. like slowly going. Yeah, I think this episode's got to put that, that meme cool. to bed. I'm glad to see the old Aaron. That was hardcore. Yep. And drilling the other hole to go Especially get as, the fish. What I really appreciated about that video was they really showed how often you move to actually find these fish. They didn't oh, just yeah. run, 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 and then, oh, yep, we're on the fish. Yep. Uh, That's real it life. It was shit, pounding it, pounding it, pounding it, pounding it. In the last five minutes, they caught a fish. Yep. Uh, and it, I mean, it was a nice fish, but it wasn't like... It wasn't, it wasn't like a massive monster. Yep. I mean, it was, well, Manitoba Master Angler, but I'm starting to think all fish in Manitoba are ma- Master <laughs> Everyone's angler. a Master Angler there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Good deal. Well, thank you guys for uh, for listening. It's been an awesome season, like we mentioned, and uh, yep. we're lo- really looking forward to the next season. We have some cool things planned. Yeah, we've got some plans. We got up our sleeves, so we've been <laughs> Stay spit tuned. back and or uh, spitballing back and forth. Yep. So uh, yeah, we'll be talking about it all summer. Yep, appreciate you absolutely. All right, well, have a good rest of your uh, season, and if you guys are still out fishing, cool. If you guys are out open water fishing, maybe we'll see you out there. Yep, get after it. Awesome. We'll see you next time on. The Short Rod Show.